Awesome. Hey, Mark. Well, it's great to be here. My second slush. I think my only conference that I go every year, which is great. Um, and today I'm here with Chris, which is one of our old, I mean, you're not old, but you're one of my oldest founders, I would say. <laughs> Anyways, uh, well, I think we could start by talking about Aurora. I remember meeting you and um, when you were raising your seed round and you told me you were going to build the OS of the solar industry. Mm. And I was like, what does the OS of the solar industry mean? So maybe, you know, you can talk about what that is. and. Yeah. What you guys have built. I mean, like, like every industry, the, the solar industry has a lot of very specific challenges that it needs to do. And the, the, the vision was how do we build a full stack, we, we call operating system, a suite of software solutions that allow um, solar companies to accelerate the deployment of, of solar uh, installations. Uh, with the ultimate goal of putting a lot more solar on roofs and transitioning the world to a future that's in large part power, powered by solar. Um, a lot of challenges are well, companies in that space face a lot of challenges. Mm -hmm. um, back in 2014, when we started, the industry was still quite nascent. Well, I mean, the solar industry is kind of an old industry and a new industry at the same time. It's been around, you know, since yes. Einstein wrote his paper about the photoelectric effect in a way, but the, the new version of it being commercially uh, viable is quite, quite recent. And so when we started in 2014, um, there was a, still a lot of manual work going into designing these, these systems. Um, people rolling trucks, meaning they would drive out to, to a site, they would climb onto a roof, and they would take, uh, take shade readings on, on the roof. Yep. And then they would drive, you know, get back off the roof. Some people would literally fall off. I met people who landed in the bushes. <laughs> and then they'd drive back to the, to the office, plug in the computer, and get some ballpark estimates. It's very unscalable and not very accurate either. And so yeah. what we said is like, hey, no, technology can, can solve this. We can build a design solution that lets people design accurate systems uh, from their from their office, thereby taking out a lot of a lot of costs. Actually, brought a awesome a quick uh, picture of it or, or animation of it. You can see the the software in action, uh, sort of a 3D model uh, of a building. The sort of colorful um, thing you see there that's lidar data. So we include a lot of data sets, uh, imagery, aerial imagery, lidar data, weather data, utility rates, and so forth, uh, all at the click of a button. So within seconds, you can really generate a a 3D model that's, that's accurate. We run a full shade simulation. So we, uh, we simulate the sun going through the sky. We ray trace the whole scene, uh, calculate energy production, savings, mm -hmm. and so forth. Um, all with the eventual goal of, of helping a, an installer answer the, the fundamental question. Right? If you, do you have solar on your home? I and actually don't. So I feel don't? bad Smart. saying this in Europe. <laughs> OK, we've got to fix that. But if you, actually, good case in point. So what you do is you'd call up your local solar company, <laughs> and they'd ask you for two things, which is your electric bill and your address. Yes. And those are the inputs to our software. And at the end of it, what you want to know is, what can solar do for me? How much would I save on my bill? Yeah. How much will it cost, and so forth? And that's all the calculations we do in the software. So that's the, the core of it, um, all with the, with, the, with the goal of really streamlining the cost of solar. You know, one interesting thing is that the first time I, you know, you, you were talking about building this, mm. I was thinking initially it's all about automation, how they can do their job faster. Mm. Uh, but I remember thinking, well, this is going to allow them to sell more stuff, right? Mm. And I wonder if that has played out when you guys sold your product, has your customers mm. look at the value that you provide? Yeah, absolutely. It's both. It allows you to, to run a scalable business, really. That's kind yeah. of, we, I can tell you about the story too, how we started, but that, that's the, the fundamental thing. You can take out costs. So in the US in particular, the, uh, if, if you were to go solo on your home um, and say the system costs you $40,000, less than half of that is the equipment. Yeah. All the rest is soft costs. So it's all the costs involved of getting the panels onto your roof, uh, which, is, which is crazy. It's a less than a 50% efficiency, crazy. if you will, yeah. uh, for your dollar that you spend. And so the question is, how do we increase that efficiency? How do we make uh, solar more and more cost effective? And we can do that by streamlining processes by driving data-driven design, and it all translates ultimately into cheaper, cheaper solar for you. Awesome. Well, very impressive. I'm going to rewind the clock and go mm. back to when you started. I remember in, you know, I met you in 2013, and um, in 2011, Solyndra had just shut down, mm. and we came from a bunch of people in the valley investing in solar, mm. and I think nobody even wanted to take your call. I remember telling people we had invested in this solar design mm. company, and they were like, well, yeah. that's not going to be successful for your little firm. So, um, you know, walk us through that. I think the story of, I think a lot of founders in the audience that are 
probably fundraising. It's a tough environment. What was that journey of you guys, you know? Um, I guess your, your little firm is not so little anymore, huh? <laughs> yeah. Um, no, we started in, uh, when was it when we met? In 2013. 2013. Yeah, when you were starting out, we were starting out. That's right. Um, so we, uh, let me tell you a bit of the backstory. So we actually didn't want to start a software business at first. We wanted to start a solar installation business. Yes. Um, at the time, we were focused on emerging markets. The idea is energy is an issue there. It's usually unreliable, expensive, and yet you have a lot of sun. So very simple calculus. <laughs> um, we designed a, a system, a pilot project for a school in Nairobi, Kenya. Um, and it worked out well, but it was a lot of work that went into it. And we realized how inefficient the, the process was. We had this Excel model that just kept Frankensteining out of control and just growing and getting more and more complex. Dropboxing files back, and it's just not a good process, and it wasn't data driven. But we may do. Um, but then what happened is other people started reaching out to us, asking, "Hey, does solar make sense for me, for my home, for my building?" And we're like, "Well, we don't know. It depends, <laughs> right? It's that's the thing about solar. It's very bespoke to yeah. every every building." Um, and so we realized quickly we needed we needed software to to do that. We also looked at where solar was going to go, right? And the world is on this massive trend, this tra uh, transition to to a future that's powered by renewables. And it became clear to us that something like this needed to exist for us to put, you know, put solar in the world. But as you pointed out back in- Which, by, by the way, I'll just stop you there for a second. I yeah. think when, I love that story because, yeah. you know, you went on and did a solar installation and then you realize actually the problems with it. So I think yeah. founders that are solving their own problems or that run into something and then decide to fix it, yeah. ultimately, you know, they build real companies. I, I didn't realize at the time, but in retrospect, we were basically in the shoes of our customers, yes. right? We were... You were the customer. We were the customer. <laughs> we were starting their business, right? And we're like, what would we want, and, you know, if we, you know, to run this business? And it um, became clear to us that this is something yeah. we needed. Uh, and then we started talking to people outside. Uh, we figured this clearly must exist. Uh, we talked around and it, it, didn't. it didn't. And we're like, wow, okay, there's a big opportunity here. And it's a big need and a big opportunity to make a difference too. But like you said, this was in 2013, which is in the, in the wake of the last clean tech boom and subsequent bust. Yes. And so Cylinder was the, the big, big name that failed um, quite, quite uh, publicly and, and visibly. And so nobody was particularly interested in writing a check in solar. And we try to explain the reason that these companies went out of business is the, sa is the reason that we we will be successful because yes. silicon prices dropped. Um, but that was a tough argument to make. Or, well, we made it, it but very it, did, tough. it didn't stick. Um, but we found folks like yourselves that, that believed in us and, uh, and uh, our customers did too. And that's what, what kept us going. Yeah. Well, I think you raised, I can't remember exactly, but around a million dollars. And Nine, that... $925,000. Exactly. Not even a million. So I remember even. every dollar was worth a lot. Yeah. Um, and you didn't quite bootstrap the company, but it felt like almost you bootstrapped it almost, to almost yeah. seven million in ARR, which was, I thought it was very impressive and yeah. it forms kind of strong DNA at that company. Yeah. Maybe walk us through that journey. We can, um, the software is fairly complicated. It looks simple, but it's actually yeah. fairly complicated. Yeah. I know you had a lot of PhDs doing a lot of science stuff to make it simple. Um, tell us about building that initial product, all the sciences goes into it. When did you guys realize, oh, we have something that an installer, which is a small business, is able to use and actually generate value? Yeah, I mean, it, it, took, it took a while. It started with that vision, like what yeah. would we love, right? To, love to have. Um, and then you got to test that vision against the real world, right? As long as in your head, it's like hard to tell. Is this something, is it not? Are you crazy? Are you not? And so we, we just literally called up local installers. We Googled Soul Installer Palo Alto and... <laughs> picked up the phone and um, I was a bit, you know, nervous and skeptical about it, but turns out people pick up the phone and they, they love, yes. you know, if you're interested in their problem and trying to, trying to help them. And so we went to the office and we're like, here's what we're working and showed an early prototype and, uh, and they're like, this is great. Uh, we love what you're doing, um, but there's always that, that but, uh, but, you know, come back when you have X, Y, and, and Z. Um, because we have a business to run, we need these features, otherwise we're like, oh, shoot, like, but okay. So we went back to the office, uh, your office actually, where yes. you, ho you hosted <laughs> us uh, in the early days, and we, you know, sit there, write code for a couple months, and then we go back, and they're like, great, now you have X, Y, Z, but we also actually forgot we need A, B, and C. 
I'm like, ah, so I'm back. And, you know, we kept doing that um, for about a year. Yeah. And then over time, objections became less and less. And then at some point, we got the first check. Yeah, I remember was, that. Yeah, it actually got <laughs> mailed to the office. It was a literal check, not a figurative. And I walked, $159. <laughs> and I walked to the bank and I deposited it. And that was our first revenue. And I, th I still have the check in the office yes. somewhere. Um, but that was the process. It's just sort of, you know, running into walls until, you know, the first wall yeah. gives. And then there's another wall, but then that one gives. And at some point, you just... Do you it. Know, you're just doing it. Well, uh, I think you just said $159. And, um, mm. you know... If you're a big company, a giant company, I would say number one company in this industry. Mm. Um, it's really hard to build a large company when the orders are small to begin with. You're selling to these small businesses. Mm. I think us in the venture business, mm. when we hear um, companies selling to small businesses, we almost run away because it's so hard. Yeah. So um, I'd love to hear, even for people that are not in the solar industry, how do you build a sales machine? for you know, SMB and what did you guys have to do to go from that initial $159 to $7 million in ARR you know, before your Series A? What did that take? How did you build your team and yeah, make that I happen? Mean, at first we didn't because it didn't matter, right? Like, there's no <laughs> point building a sales machine if you don't have the, the product. And so you don't, you know, that old adage that like you don't do things that are not scalable. That's perfectly fine and actually better in the early days. So um, it was just us, me and my co-founder, going to the office and, you know, and then getting that first check and then getting a second check and the third one. And it's not about being scalable. It's about finding product yeah. market fit, right? The elusive PMF. Um, and, uh, and then you can, can look at it. Now, what do we do afterwards? Well, we, we hired our first sales rep. Um, and uh, he actually came from the solar industry, so he knew the customer. He actually joined because he loved the product um, and was excited to, to be on this side. And he talked to his sort of colleagues, if you will. Um, and then we, you know, well, revenue came and more customers r referred other yes. customers. Um, I'm actually a first customer, big customer went out of business and we were bummed. Yeah, that was like a maybe $10,000 account, wow. eight licenses, maybe something like that. And uh, we're quite bummed about it uh, until a couple months later, we saw new accounts with familiar names pop up. And uh, it was the same users that went to other companies or started new companies. Right. And then, uh, you know, brought Aurora with them. So a lot of word of mouth, a lot of um, yeah. trade shows. Hitting, we did road shows, yeah. very uh, unscalable things. But, uh, you know, literally you rent, there. rented a car for three weeks and drove around, you know, the uh, I love those Southern stories. California and the Northeast and uh, just said, hey, we have something for you. Are you interested? And many said no, but a few said yes. And then uh, you build scale, hire more folks and... Yeah, and then after awesome. a while, you can figure out how do you optimize your go-to-market and how do you go up-market yeah. and, you know, how do you get more metrics-driven. But, it, driven. but in the early days, it doesn't matter as much. I think it's what you say, the word of mouth, that I think we've heard in other talks. When you have this word of mouth, yeah. it's almost like a necessary ingredient, even if you're doing SMB sales or SaaS. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, well, maybe we can now talk about AI and solar, which I know it seems a little bit kind of... Um, uh, you know, disconnected, but we're all talking about AI in this conference. Mm. Um, and I know you guys have been using AI, all sorts of AI in your products. So maybe we can talk about that first. How do you guys, how are you guys using it in Aurora right now? And, mm. you know, we can go from there. Yeah, we actually started on that train quite a while. Actually, it wasn't even AI. We, we, um, we had a fundamental vision and the problem, right? The vision was... Um, it's very, very complex to design an optimal solar installation. There's many steps involved. You've got to figure out the energy consumption of the home. You've got to figure out the roof structure and you know, model that. You've got to place panels, configure it all up. You've got to simulate it. You've got to run the financials. And that's sort of your end-to-end -end yeah. process. And many of these things we could automate, but there's a crucial part, which is how do we get an accurate roof model? And the only way was you know, a human would draw it, and we could speed that up, but it was inherently limited by the human. And so we said, okay, how about we automate that with computer vision? And this was sort of old school, like edge detection and whatnot, um, mm -hmm. old school computer vision. Until, of course, the deep learning revolution happened, we switched paths and we've been sort of on that, on that train for a while. And so that's what, what the, our pipeline does. It basically, it's, honestly, it's like magic. You give it a, an address, we could stick in your address, and it would basically generate a, a roof model just like this in 3D. 
place panels automatically, and it basically Crazy. collapses that whole design process that would take a... Well, our software already took it down from hours to minutes, and it now takes it down to, to seconds. Yeah. And so thereby taking out the cost uh, of, of that whole process of designing solar and make that truly scalable. Because to transition the world to a you know, future that's powered in large part by solar, uh, there's tens if not hundreds of millions of homes that we want to electrify yeah. right across the world. And so how do we do that in a scalable sort of uh, specific way yeah. to, each, to each, uh, each home? Awesome. Automation is the key. And I know, I think part of the value that you do is not just the design, but mm. the entire sale process for your customers. They mm. are able to manage their customers, their business more scalable. Mm. Um, are you guys integrating AI also on you know, how they're doing quoting or proposals, et cetera? Mm. Or you know, I know we're hearing a lot about that for other industries. I mean, so far we've been focused on the automation part. Yeah. There's two parts. One is the... Uh, creating that, that roof model, right? Uh, designing the building structure. Uh, and then the next step is the optimal placement of panels. So if you have mm -hmm. a given roof, like for your roof, Mar, what's the best system, the most cost-effective yep. system? Because you can place the same panels in, say, a shaded location or configure them suboptimally and it produce less energy for the same cost. And so that's another way in which we, we use sort of uh, AI optimization tools to, yeah. uh, to help our users. But there's many more applications that... that you know, we haven't yet uh, fully explored that we're, we're interested in, right? It goes across the whole life cycle. There's a lot of, well, document intakes, reading, reading electric bills, interpreting them. Um, we have huge data sets of energy consumption. How do you make sense of that? Um, how do you monitor systems live and detect faults and detect an anomalies? That's, across the whole life cycle, um, there, there is opportunities to, to embed that and, and have an AI-first approach. Great. Awesome. Well, I also know that even though you started with residential, mm. you're now doing mm. industrial applications. Mm -hmm. What's different about that, or what are the are the requirements different? How mm. how is that process of going after that yeah, second have, set of customers? I have a photo uh, uh, of animation of that too. We have a second product called called Helioscope um, that focuses more on the uh, on the design of larger scale installations. So this is in this case a commercial commercial rooftop. Um, it could be a parking lot of an office building, it could be a warehouse, a distribution center, something like that. Um, some similarities, but also fundamental differences in terms of workflows. A quite obvious one is residential systems are small, maybe dozens of panels. These systems, that's probably a you know, medium-sized system, but it could be even, even larger, it could be thousands of panels. So mm -hmm. How do you design the workflow for it? How do you... Uh, optimize the whole thing for speed and, and so forth. It's slightly different, slightly different buyers to different dynamics. One is more of a higher volume, one is lower volume. Um, so different approaches for, for yeah. different, different segments, but uh, each one has its own, uh, its own merit. At what point did you guys decide in the history of the company, you're so focused on selling to residential, there's one mm -hmm. type of sale, mm -hmm. you're going to go do these projects. It's a completely different sale. Yeah. At what point did you guys decide it's time now to go on you know, after this other sector? Well, this was actually uh, an acquisition. Uh, so one of our former, um, well, other companies in this space, um, we were head-to-head -head with for, for a while. Uh, but then what happened after a while is that they specialized more in the CNI space, commercial industrial solar. We specialized more in residential. And then we had an opportunity to, to partner up a couple of years ago uh, because we just said there's so much leverage, so much shared vision yeah. uh, to, well, to join forces. and. And that's how that, that happened. We also launched other products, though, across the life cycle. So it's not just about design. Um, design is important because it's the f what I think of the, the core problem uh, of, of solar, uh, because every system is bespoke and needs to be bespoke. Um, but there's so many more steps along the, the life cycle. You need to identify a lead. You need to qualify a lead. You need to sell the system. You need to design the system. You need to yeah. finance it. You need to get a permit. You need to manage it to install, and then you have a 20-year life cycle post-install. And so how do you provide uh, you know, tailored solutions across that life cycle in one integrated fashion? That's sort of how I think about it. And uh, we have other products too, one from the permitting space and one in the sales, uh, sales space. So how do we help, help our customers have conversations with homeowners right. about going solar? 
Um, so different solutions yeah. for different. It's it's pretty parts impressive of the how broad your portfolio is. I know mm. you start really narrow, and you know that's the right way to mm. execute. But it's very impressive. Um, anyways, mm. great. Uh, well, I have one question, which is about you know your company, obviously huge success. Mm. I know it's hard to build a company, and I know it's it's good for the audience to hear perhaps some of the challenges that you guys had. If you had any, I assume you did. You know what was tough in building Aurora or, you know, things yeah. that you had to, had to overcome? Um, it's funny, I had a conversation with the team not too long ago. And, yeah. you know, it's, uh, I, uh, what I told them was, there's always problems. Yes. Right? Um, it's been 10 years of problems. <laughs> Having problems, not a problem. Like, not doing something about them, that's, that's the real, that's the only problem. Um, and so it's, it, it's not easy building a company, right? It, different challenges along the way. I mean, in the beginning, it was a lot of the no's, right? How do you persist through the sort of barrage of no's, right? Um, you put yourself out there, you know, you have this vision, you care about this, and then you're like, a no, or the, the, the VC no, which is, you know, yeah. love what you're doing, stay in touch. We don't know anything. No, <laughs> no you, you guys would have yes. No, but, but uh, we don't. But uh, uh, others. Um, and so how do you persist, right? And w one... Tried thing, but it was really true. Was it was you know, a you gotta you gotta have that passion for what you do, yeah, right. And we just felt this was such a big need. This needed to exist. There was sort of this, I don't know, irrational belief that this this should and needs to exist. And then our customers, they carried us, uh, carried us through it, right? Because we talked to them and they're like, this is awesome. Like we'd love we'd love this. We just need you know X, Y, and Z. Yeah. And so that's that's a that's a very powerful and, and, and motivating. Um, yeah. That was the early challenges. And then at different stages come different ones. Yeah. And I had to personally reinvent myself along the way. I feel like I, I always say I haven't had one job in the last 10 years. I had, you know, yeah. five different ones. And I, every, every two years, I need to change the way I operate and, and update. I that. think um, you are, you know, you're, you're totally right. I think people in this audience, we, you listen to folks and he thinks that everything works, but you're right. There's problems all the time and how you solve them. Everything, are, always, everything always breaks from the outside. Everything breaks, but you are like the and definition it, of and calm. Especially I, if it I goes feel. well, actually, right? <laughs> the, the better it goes, the more it's actually, the faster yes. it's going to break. Um, and so, well, you got to, I don't know, look at, look at it sort of with the distance and just, that's the process, right? And again, then look at, you know, take stock and say, what do we need to change? Yeah. Uh, and then change that. And it's going to take a while and that's sometimes frustrating. Um, but then you, you level up and then yeah. you, keep, you keep going and focus on the next thing and the next thing. And that's, that's what it is uh, building a company. And it's not, not easy, but that's not the, easy, that's the but journey. And it's, it's very rewarding when it, when it all comes together. Awesome. Uh, well, I have a final question. I think the audience mm. probably doesn't know this, but you and I like soccer very much. Mm. Um, I remember watching Bayern, which is your team and my team, FC mm. Barcelona at my house. Oh, yeah. And... Um, you know, Aurora is a big company now, so I'm wondering when are you going to sponsor <laughs> Bayern, or is that, that that's it would be great publicity for that European yeah. market. That'd be. I'll talk to a marketing team about that. That's okay. uh, <laughs> it's an it's an aspir. I don't think we're quite there yet, but uh, okay, that's your aspiration uh, though. <laughs> <laughs> maybe awesome. maybe one day. Maybe okay. one day. Awesome. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Mark. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay.